Mobile games, man. They hit different back in the day. Like, I don't know what kind of mobile games people be dropping nowadays. They just can't compare. Like, how'd they let this in the app store, bro? So as you guys know, there's a lot of mobile games out there from the 2000s and 2010s that just hit different. And since you guys really enjoyed my last video, I figured I'd make a part two. Now, the first game is Pocket God. Now, I played this game like a few times and that was really it. I never really understood the game because I was kind of stupid. But the premise of this game was you had goals to complete on certain islands and pretty much you could do whatever you want with these creatures on the island. Like, you could really be a menace if you wanted to, bro. Like, you could kill the motherfuckers. A few games similar to this one that I enjoyed were Kick the Buddy and Beat the Boss. And of course, bro, I was begging. I was like, Mom, please, let me get Beat the Boss or Kick Buddy. And they were like, no, you can't get this game. It's 17 plus. And of course, I was crying in the club. <laughs> so my alternative was Pocket God. And even though I didn't understand it, from time to time, I would pick it up and play it. Next up, we got Dragon City. Now, I love this game growing up. And I don't know how I pulled this off, but they are actually the sponsor of today's video. As y'all may know, Dragon City is a free-to-play mobile game available on all devices. You just build an empire with floating islands, farms, habitats, buildings, and a shit ton of dragons. I love this game too this day bro like let's make this clear sorry for the bad mic i'm on vacation but i just had to show you guys my park bro i'm cooking up look at this at this point there's over a thousand that's got to be my favorite feature of the game like unfortunately i had to start over but right now i'm breeding my water dragon with my fire dragon to hopefully get something cool and there's a ton more elements that you can combine such as flame nature ice and electric and many other elements so you can hatch your dragons feed them and watch them evolve and there's so many unique elements designs and rarities for the these dragons that you can collect to make your very own dragon empire and you can even get dragons of your favorite youtubers like lachlan mr beast fundy george not found now personally my favorite part of dragon city was definitely trying to get those really rare dragons like sometimes you could breed something and end up with something really rare you don't know how hyped i was bro when i got something rare but download dragon city to find out if you could get something cool you can download it by clicking the link in the description or scan the qr code on screen and you even get a free starter pack with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the rare Scout Dragon. Thank you, Dragon City, for sponsoring today's video. Next up, we got Minecraft. You cannot forget about Minecraft. Like, Minecraft Pocket Edition was where it was at. But before I was able to get Minecraft Pocket Edition since it was $7.99, which was so tough for me back in the day, I really had to do the most to save up for that. But before I got the Pocket Edition, I had Minecraft Lite, bro. And Minecraft Lite was booty, all right? It was terrible. Everything was locked, and it was really the only alternative alternative that I had, so I was kind of stuck with it until I finally got Minecraft Pocket Edition. I was so happy. I was a happy camper, all right? Even though I never really played the survival mode, I would always just build random shit on creative because that's how I felt like playing the game in my JIT years, bro. I'd build, like, mansions out of, like, gold, and then I'd build roller coasters. That That's what I would do back in the day. I don't know if that one was just me, but I don't know why my fondest memories of playing Minecraft were literally listening to the Black Eyed Peas while playing Minecraft. I don't know why that's just in rained in my head, but literally that's just all I think of whenever I hear their music. Now, next up, we got Crossy Road. Now, Crossy Road came out when I was in middle school, so I wasn't, like, too, too young when this game came out, but oh, trust me, I still had no life. I still played this game a shit ton. Like, it didn't matter. It didn't matter how old I was. I was still grinding this game for some reason. I unlocked, like, almost every single character, and even did the most to unlock, like, this koala character, I remember. You had to do, like, some secret task to get it. If there was a few more like that, but I did all of them, okay? Because I was just sweat at the game. Now I remember showing off to my friends that I had every single character in the game because I was really putting in all my hours into goddamn Crossy Road. Even though all you really did in the game was just cross the street. That was it. I still loved it. That's literally all I needed as a kid to be entertained. I really had a high score of like two or 300, bro. Like when I, when I would cook up, I was in my element. There was no stopping me. And you don't know how hyped I would feel. I got more of an adrenaline rush than going to the gym, bro. That That's how crazy it was for me. I really took that shit seriously. Next up, we got My Singing Monsters. Now this game's similar to Dragon City. In this game in Dragon City, I would wake up and check it like every morning. Didn't matter what the circumstance was. Like I could have been missing a kidney or some shit and I'd still open the game and play it. In the hospital? Nah, bro. I gotta set my alarm 7 a.m. sharp, bro. I, I gotta I gotta feed my monsters. Even though like things took hours to happen and it was one of those games you had to like use gems to skip, I still somehow found a way to play it a lot. I have so many hours in the game, bro. It's crazy. Same with Dragon City. Like my iPad mini 
file went crazy. Because like I said in multiple videos, I was really an iPad kid back in the day. Like I really didn't play other games that much. Like I didn't have an Xbox. I really only had a Wii, my mobile games, and then my DS. And that was really it. I really only had a few options when it came to gaming, but trust me, my little ass heart was still content. The monsters really just kept me going with in life, man. And every time I talk about my singing monsters to like to somebody who played the game, people around us would be like, what the hell are they talking about? A toe jammer? A who? What? But still, even though it made no sense at all, it was still one of my favorite games growing up. Next up, we got Fruit Ninja. Now, Fruit Ninja was a game I'd play like while I was waiting, all right? Like if I was at a doctor's office and I had to wait like 10, 20 minutes, I'd whip out some Fruit Ninja. It was a good game, but I'd kind of get bored of it after like 20, 30 minutes. It's really crazy that a game with a bunch of flashing colors and fruits popping up on the screen couldn't even keep my attention when I was little, bro. That's, that's how, that's how shit my attention span was like seriously like I don't know what kind of timing my brain was on when I was little I couldn't play games like the next one for long periods of time Temple Run Temple Run was really fun don't get me wrong right for about like 10 minutes and then I'd already get bored the games that kind of you you break records and do the same thing over and over again I could just never play for long periods of time I don't know why except Subway Surfers I feel like that was the only one I really did play a lot but then again there was a lot going on and it had a shit ton of flashy colors that probably why I kept my attention. Next up, we got Talking Tom. Now, I really didn't have this game growing up, but from what I can remember, I played it a lot on my friend's iPad, and I thought it was hilarious that, like, when you were to talk to him, he would repeat it in a really fast, high-pitched voice. And that's really all I needed to get me rolling on the floor, apparently. Like, it really didn't take much effort. Like, let's not lie. And they had a few spin-off apps, like Talking Ben and Talking Angela, or something like that. I don't know. And as you all know, Talking Ben has had a recent resurgence, along with Subway Surfers. Before I deleted TikTok, like, every video I'd see was, like, some Subway Surfers gameplay, Family Guy, and then a bunch of other shit. And as for Talking Ben, all it took was I Show Speed to pick up this really dead game, and now everybody likes Talking Ben again. Now, again, I didn't play this one much, so I don't really remember much or any of the features besides that you could talk to him. I believe there were a few other things you could do on the app, but I'm not even gonna hold you, bro. I don't feel like downloading Talking Tom. Like, come on. Now, this next game will never be forgotten. And sometimes, hell... I'll admit it. I even play it to this day. Sometimes me and the boys play it for old time's sake. Pokemon Go. This game just slapped for no reason, bro. I love this game. Now, my love for Pokemon and my love for the outdoors, which is kind of hard to believe, it just fits so well for a mobile game. So this had to be my favorite mobile game when it dropped in 2016. This was like all I was playing. There, there was really no other mobile game that could compete besides Crossy Road and Clash Royale. And bro, I did the most to get the entire Pokemon. Decks. I was even getting like a jailbreaked version of the game to go to Australia and try and get Pokemon only exclusive there. This game was a grind, bro. I'd play it every single day. I would go to my dad to his work and there was like a plaza he worked in. So I was able to just walk around in the plaza with my brother and we would just walk around and see what we could find. And we'd be walking for hours. I kid you not. My legs burnt at the end of the day, bro. That's how much I was walking. And we'll just say that was the most active I've been in quite some time. Pokemon Go kept me outside, bro. Like, I, I legit have never seen so much sunlight in my entire life at that point. Middle schooler me was a little emo, I'm not gonna lie, and I wasn't really going outside too much. But something about Pokemon Go helped me bond with the boys even more, and I just loved it. Next up, we got Hungry Shark Evolution. Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh my god, this game. This game just went brazy on a whole nother level. Now this game I could play for hours because there was actually a goal to work towards. And the games like that, I feel like I could play for much longer. Hungry Shark was one of those games you'd eat a bunch of shit, right? Cause you're a shark. And then you'd actually like get points to unlock other sharks. And that's why I would play this game so much, bro. It was a grind for me. And this right here was the game I'd play on long car ride. No Clash of Clans, no Clash Royale. I was stuck on an iPad with no cellular data. What do I do? I'm playing Hungry Shark Evolution. That's what I'm doing. There was just something about being in control, you know, being able to eat a bunch of shit that just made me feel like a beast, all right? I don't know what it was. Maybe that's why I love the game so much. I don't know. And remember, use my link in the description or the QR code on screen right now to get Dragon City. They sponsored today's video and it really helps me out a ton if you guys go and download the game. If you do, I'd really appreciate it. Want another video to watch? Watch this video on screen. Anyways, I'm out. Bye.